Okay, um, well, young people are always jealous, you know. They have to get beaten down by the system before they uh, can uh, just be normal about things. Uh, that's just the way it is, you know. But, uh, all right, so we're a bit late here starting. But this is closed, right? The question is where we're at as far as uh, this book goes and these kingdoms. Now I'm going to show you now, let's finish this vision before we go into questions about what we need to uh, understand. This is, uh, as you say, as you see, pretty serious stuff. This is going to uh, move a lot of subsequent history. So I saw a little horn, line 7, 8, sprouting and it was full of books. Then what happens? A thrones were set in place, and one of great age, or sometimes called the Ancient of Days, took his seat, and his robe was white as snow, a little bit like the Jesus empty tomb uh, presentations of the different Gospels with an angel who was white and true white. But this is not an angel. Who is this? This is God. And a uh, strange type of portrait of God, but it is God. And um, the throne is something from Ezekiel, like the chariot vision of Ezekiel picking up here in Daniel. And the hair of his head is pure as wool. His throne was a blaze of flames. Here's the Daniel, uh, here's the e e Ezekiel chariot vision. The wheels were burning fire. And a stream of fire poured out. You know, this is again, I, I read you a little bit of that from Ezekiel last time. Issuing from his presence, a thousand thousand waited on him. This is the myriads of heavenly angels, the heavenly host. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. This is uh, probably not supposed to do this, to pick God. But uh, he's, he's, uh, he's doing it. Uh, and that's again uh, really unique to portray God and his court, if you like, or uh, the heavens. And a court was held, and the books were open. A lot of this has gone into the apocalypse of the New Testament. It is, this is why this book is famous, right? What we're talking about now. I don't think the rest of it really is terribly, uh, you know. Impressive necessarily, you might like it, you might not like it, you, but this now we're really into the, the heart of this book, the nitty gritty. The book of uh, the uh, Revelation, the Apocalypse of the New Testament, has this thing about the books being open and all this sort of, I call that kind of uh, presentation a little bit mystification, impressing with the imagery, whether, you know, uh, making people awed by the power of whatever's going on. Needless to say, I'm not all. The great things of Horn, but I think it's great literature. I do think it's, it, it is good literature, not great, but good literature, interesting literature. We're still ringing in my ears. As I watched, the beast was killed, and its body destroyed and committed to the flames, and the other beasts were deprived of their power, but received a lease on, on life for a season and a time. Usually this season and a time is a, a time two times and a half. And when they say that, a time two times and a half that we'll have in Daniel at some point, I can't put my finger on it right at this moment, you've probably read it, you've seen it. It's the amount of time Antiochus Epiphanes rules before he's killed or died, I forget what his fate is, back in Syria, after he desecrated the temple. And he desecrated the temple, and you read Josephus and the Maccabee books, after he returned from a campaign in Egypt. And really, his desecration of the temple, obviously someone told him there was a lot of gold in the temple. <laughs> he needed money for his campaign. He had to pay off the soldiers. Who else needed money for his campaign? Had to pay off things. Vespasian and Titus, and I already told you a little bit about that, but uh, just to draw the parallel there, they, they took the temple, burned it, and so on, 
and that will be in Josephus' Jewish War. And there was gold and treasure in the temple in those days, because it was some people have uh, portrayed the temple like a bank. You know, the people gave their contribution, put their money, and kept it there or whatever. A sacred place. No, uh, even the uh, Parthenon in, in, in Athens was like a bank. Because nobody would dare incur the goddess's wrath by, you know, stealing from the sanctuary. And she was covered, the picture of Athena, the, port, uh, the statue of Athena, which is 40 feet high or something like that, in the Parthenon, she was covered in gold leaf. And, uh, you know, a lot of the treasure of Athens was in the Parthenon. It was like the bank of Athens. You have to see these things, not in the imaginary way, but the real way. The temple was the bank of Jerusalem. Well, so Antiochus Epiphanes needed some money. He stopped by and raided the place. And took the money he needed, whatever, to pay for his campaigns. And, of course, this didn't produce a very positive effect on the local inhabitants, as you can see from this book. In any case, the author of Daniel makes more than that. And I gazed into the visions of the night. We had that image earlier. And I saw all coming on the clouds of heaven. One, as you said in your Bible, had the appearance of a human being. One like a son of man. One like a son of man. But since he's on the clouds of heaven, he's not a man. Men don't fly on the clouds of heaven normally. So he looked like a man, but he was something more than a man. What he was, we don't know. In Christianity, he's Jesus Christ. 